Hello and welcome to lesson two. So the title for lesson two is Understandings and Dimensions of Globalization. So if you've got your partial notes with you, uh, which you wanna make sure you do have your partial notes with you as you go through this lesson video, um, then you can go to your unit one partial notes, go to the back side of the first page. Um, in the last lesson you were working on collective identities. Well, today we move on to where it says lesson two, and you can write down the title of lesson two, which is Understandings and Dimensions of Globalization. So the goal of today's lesson is to understand what globalization is and also to learn about its three dimensions. Uh, so let's do that. Don't forget we are in unit one and the unit one question is, should globalization shape my identity? So in lesson one, we learned all about identity and then today in lesson two, we learn about globalization. All right, so let's get into it. So what is globalization? Well, if you took, took a look at this image up on um, the screen here, you're gonna see that we have people who live in all parts of the world. Yes, the human species has now spread to all corners of the globe, uh, even though the globe doesn't have corners, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, we have people everywhere. And if you look at this image, you'll see that people are connected to each other, right? Despite living in different parts of the world, we are connected to each other. So being connected to each other is an important part of globalization. The fact that even though I live in Canada, in Calgary, Alberta, I'm, I'm connected to people in all continents of the world, most likely, whether I know it or not. I, in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about the different ways in which you are connected to people in all parts of the world, okay? And then secondly, people all around the world are dependent on each other. We rely on other people in other parts of the world, um, even though often we don't even realize that that is the case. So let's learn about how we are connected and dependent um, to people all around the world. So where it says uh, globalization in your partial notes, you can write down this definition the process by which people around the world are becoming more and more interconnected and interdependent. So, interconnected, well, well that just means that people are connected to each other. Interdependent just means that people are dependent on each other. Okay, so those are the two important words that we are focusing on uh, right now fact that we are connected to each other and the fact that we are dependent on each other despite living in um, different parts of the world. So you're probably wondering, how are we interconnected? How are humans connected to each other um, through this process called globalization? Well, it's funny you should ask. Uh, well, let me ask your question. Let's, let me ask you a question. If you needed to contact someone in another country in the next two minutes, could you do it? Of course you could, you could do it very easily. We have technology, right? We have uh, different social media platforms that you guys are very familiar with that you guys use all the time, right? So on, on the screen, we've got Facebook Messenger, we've got Instagram, we've got Snapchat, we can use these things and many, many others uh, to communicate with other people in different parts of the world. And so that allows us to be connected to the people we know and love who live in other parts of the world. Right. Um, so even though you live right about here, you probably know people who live in different parts of the planet and you want to use those um, communication technologies and those social media uh, you know, apps to communicate with those people. Right. Of course. And globalization has allowed us to do that. All right. Uh, how about travel? Let's talk about crossing the ocean. Um, if you went back 400 years in the past, it was possible to cross oceans, but you had to do it on a boat and it would take months to do it. And maybe a lot of people would die as they're making the trip. Whereas today, if you wanted to travel um, across the ocean, you could do it in a few hours just using an airplane, right? And so this has become very, very common and it's allowed us to connect with people all around the world through air travel. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a video. This video comes from before COVID-19 uh, when there were a lot more airplanes in the sky. But take a look at this video here. Um, 
here we have a map of the world, the entire planet, and we have a bunch of little yellow dots. Each of these little yellow dots represents an airplane that is uh, flying uh, throughout the course of one day. So I'm going to show you this one minute video and this one minute video uh, represents all air travel that takes place on our planet throughout the course of 24 hours. So watch. So the parts of the world where there are a lot of airplanes midday would be Europe over here, United States and Canada over here. And you're going to see uh, that India over here is going to become um, you know, busier and also Southeast Asia will become busy as airplanes make their way over there. And I hope that what you're getting from this video uh, is that we are really connected to each other. Right, um, People all around the world are very much connected to each other uh, through different things, right? Through, uh, in this case, travel, right? Through the ability to travel across continents, right? And so what do we got next? Music, right? Music is also, uh, you know, connected to globalization. In the past, if you wanted to listen to some music, you'd have to know somebody in your community who could play that music for you and you'd have to hear it live. Whereas nowadays, um, you can stream music using a variety of platforms uh, and you can stream music from countries all around the world, right? So in the past, you would only be influenced by music in your community. Uh, however, now you can be influenced by music from everywhere, right? And that is globalization, right? We can connect our, our cultures to each other um, by sharing music with each other and sharing other forms of art with each other. Okay, so that was all about being interconnected. Now, let's talk about how we are becoming more and more interdependent because of globalization. So here's a question. How many, or well, I guess, you, <laughs> how many of you made your own clothes that you're wearing? So did you make your own clothes that you were wearing today? Think about the clothes that you're wearing. Uh, did you make them? Chances are you probably didn't. Well, in the past, you know, either you would have to make your own clothes or maybe somebody in your community would make clothes for you and it would take a very long time and you would only be dependent on that person who made the clothes for you. Whereas nowadays, uh, clothes are made typically in other countries, right? It's, it's pretty rare for somebody to be wearing clothes that are made here in Canada, you know, far less common for people to be wearing clothes that are made here in Calgary. Right, so um, chances are, the the cotton that your clothes are made of were prob was probably grown in the United States, right? And then that cotton would have been put on a boat and shipped to probably somewhere in Asia, right? Uh, most likely China, but it might have been Bangladesh, it could have been Taiwan, it could have been you know a different part of Asia, and there the cotton would have been put through a factory. And it would have been dyed and it would have been woven. It would have been cut and, and assembled into um, the clothes uh, that you are now wearing. And then it would have been shipped back to um, Canada or shipped back to North America. and would have been sent to Canada this time. And then it would have ended up in the store where you bought it. And then you wore the, you're, you're going to wear those clothes for a certain amount of time. And then you're probably going to donate those clothes to, you know, um, Value Village or Salvation Army or Goodwill or something, you're probably going to donate those clothes. And then if they don't get sold in that secondhand store, well, then that secondhand store is going to donate those clothes to a developing country. And your clothes are going to end up maybe somewhere in Africa, maybe somewhere in South America. And so you are connected to each person that was part of that entire process. And you are also dependent on each person that was part of that process. So you depend on the farmer who grew the cotton 
that became the clothes that you are wearing. You are dependent on the person who drove the boat from uh, the United States all the way to Asia, where it became, uh, where the cotton was then turned into clothing. You were dependent on each of the people who touched your clothes as they created it in those factories in Asia. And then you were dependent on the person who drove the boat again, uh, taking those clothes all the way back here into Canada. And then you were you know, dependent on each person who was part of the uh, you know, distribution of that clothes to you, right? So this is globalization, right? The clothes we wear, that's globalization because we are connected to each person that was part of the process that created the clothes that we are wearing. And this is just our clothes. Think about all the other things you buy and where they come from and who made them. You're connected to each person that was a part of that process. So another question, do you grow your own food? Maybe you grow a little bit of food, right? Maybe you've got a little garden in the summertime where you grow a few, uh, a few vegetables, maybe some fruits. But for the most part, most of the food that we eat, you probably didn't grow it, right? Um, so for example, if you eat uh, rice, well, you are connected, you are dependent on the people who grew that rice. Much of our, our rice um, comes from Asia. Some of it also comes from the United States or parts of South America, but most of it comes from Asia. And so you are dependent on the person who grew that rice in that country. And then you're also dependent on uh, the people who transported that rice or that food um, across the ocean and all the way to you. Right? Um, if you enjoy Nutella, right? I know a lot of us think Nutella is very delicious. Well, Nutella is it's pretty interesting because there's a variety of ingredients that go into this product, right? Take a look at this map. You'll see that, let's see, the sugar in the Nutella probably came from over here in Brazil, whereas the cocoa, the chocolate, probably came from Nigeria in Africa, um, whereas the hazelnut probably came from Turkey, uh, which is in you know, Europe and Asia. Uh, and the palm oil probably came from uh, Malaysia, right? So all of these different um, ingredients were assembled from different parts of the world. So this is globalization, right? You, you, when you are eating the Nutella, you're, you have all these different ingredients in your mouth that all come from different parts of the world and have been put together and shipped to you so that you can eat it, right? So it's pretty interesting, right? Uh, at least I think so. <laughs> Uh, what's next? Recyclables, right? So we use things and then we recycle them. Well, what happens to them? Well, we are dependent and we are connected to the people who then recycle all of our stuff, right? So a lot of our plastic does not get recycled here in Alberta. A, a lot of it gets shipped off to developing countries. And in those developing countries, they have these factories that will recycle our plastic for us. Right? And so we are dependent on all those people who do that for us. Okay? And that's globalization. All right, so like we said, globalization is the process by which people around the world are becoming more and more interconnected and more and more interdependent. And I hope those examples that we went over help you understand how people around the world are becoming more and more connected to each other and dependent on each other. So now, in your partial notes, you're going to see that you have um, this oval right here where it says three dimensions of globalization and then this oval. Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. We're going to complete that. So inside that oval, you can write the word globalization. And we're going to learn about the three different dimensions. We have political globalization, economic globalization, and we have social globalization, right? And so these are the three dimensions of globalization, All right? So first, let's learn about um, economic globalization, which is in the box below the oval. Okay, so we have economic globalization. Take a look at this image here. You see our planet and we see some business people who are shaking hands and they're exchanging money and they're creating jobs and they're buying and selling things, right? Because we are looking at the word economic. Economic is related to the word economy, which means things like money and jobs and businesses and trades and imports and exports. That is economy. Okay, so we have money, we have people with jobs, 
We have people buying things and selling things. That's our economy. So economic globalization means that people around the world are becoming interconnected through world trade and international business. So again, you can write down the blue stuff, right? Um, everything that is blue is what you need to write down in your notes. So the important words here are world trade and international business. World trade happens when um, one country sells something to another country. That's world trade, right? And usually world trade is done through international businesses, right? Uh, international business is same, same idea, right? Countries selling things to each other, buying things from each other, and that leads to more economic globalization, right? The globalization of money and business and trade. Right? So um, we talked about clothing earlier. Well, that's a really good example of economic globalization because if you take a look at tags of the clothes that you were wearing, you will see that they come from other parts of the world. And so uh, economic globalization has allowed us to buy things that come from other parts of the world, and then we can use them here. It also allows us to sell things to people in other parts of the world, right? Next time you are picking up a piece of fruit, take a look at the sticker. The sticker will usually tell you where that fruit came from, right? It might have come from Peru, which is in South America. It might have come from the United States. It might have come from Costa Rica, which is in Central America. Or it might have come from Mexico, which is also in North America. Okay, and so that's ex economic globalization. So in your economic globalization box, it has the word example. So right here, example. Well, one example you can look at is transnational corporations. All right, so a couple of fancy words here. Let's start with the word corporation. That's just a fancy word for a business, a company, right? So you know what companies are and businesses are. Well, what about transnational companies? transnational businesses. These are um, businesses or companies that they don't just work in one country, they work in a lot of countries. Think of like McDonald's. McDonald's is in a lot of different countries around the world, right? They're not only in one country, which makes them a transnational corporation because these are companies that operate in more than one country. Okay, so let's take a look at some. Take a look at Apple. Apple's a very popular uh, company, right? And they have suppliers all around the world, right? So they supply their products to different countries all around the world. And so you see the, the bigger the Apple, the more suppliers they have. Uh, if you look at Nike, right? And uh, you'll see that they've got people creating their products all around the world as well, right? And so they are transnational. They don't just operate in one nation. Take a look at Coca-Cola. Each country that is highlighted in red is a country where a Coca-Cola product can be sold and purchased, right? And so you'll see that almost every country in the world um, sells and buys Coca-Cola products. So Coca-Cola is a transnational corporation, okay? The next dimension of globalization, if you turn the page in your partial notes, you will see is social globalization. So this is the process by which a group's lifestyle spreads across the world. If we're talking about things that are social, we're talking about people, we're talking about cultures, we're talking about languages and worldviews and people, the way they interact, all of, all of that is social, right? So when one lifestyle or one culture comes to influence other cultures and lifestyle, we call that social globalization, right? So um, one culture that has become you know, very popular and very global lately is the United States, right? So the United States is over here. And through the media, um, American culture has come to influence cultures of other countries a lot, right? And so that's called social globalization, right? So if you are wondering whether or not social globalization impacts your identity, ask yourself this question. Do you ever listen to music or watch TV shows created in other countries? I think we could probably all say yes to that question, which means that we are all impacted by social globalization. Do you follow fashion trends that started in other countries? If yes, then you are impacted by social globalization, right? The lifestyle, the culture of one country has come to influence your identity. 
Do you use social networking sites that connect you to people in other countries? Right? Do you follow people on social media who come from other countries? Do you watch uh, TikTok videos um, <clears throat> that show trends that started in other countries but have now become global trends? Well, that's social globalization. Okay. So an example of this would be anime. Right? I walk the halls of Father Lacombe and I see students um, with anime and um, they're watching anime and most, you know, it, it doesn't come from Canada, right? Um, from what I understand, it comes from Japan. It's, create, it's created in Japan and it's a way of having Japanese culture um, sort of influence other cultures around the world, right? Another one would be K-pop, right? Um, so I know a lot of students at Lacombe listen to pop music, which comes from South Korea, right? And so that's South Korean culture coming to influence other cultures around the world. And K-pop has become very global. Okay, also hip hop music, right? So you might not recognize these guys, um, but these guys were members of um, one of the very first hip hop group um, back in the 1970s, right? So hip hop started off in the Bronx, New York, and uh, became very popular. It's become very global, right? So it's part of um, American culture that has then been spread to other parts of the world and it's come to influence other cultures um, of other people all over the place. So that's social globalization. Okay, next we have political globalization, right? So what does that mean? If we're talking about things that are political, we're talking about governments. We're talking about politicians. We're talking about prime ministers and presidents and members of parliament. All of that is political. So political globalization is the process by which political decisions and actions are becoming more involved with other countries, right? So uh, if our Canadian government makes a decision, they don't just make it you know, only for the people of Canada, their decisions influence other countries as well, right? And they, they cooperate more and more with leaders of other countries when they are making decisions. And so that's making it more and more global, globalized, right? So you'll see in the box, it says examples. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. One example is the Paris Climate Accord. So the Paris Climate Accord, um, an accord just means an agreement, right? Where a group of people reach an agreement. And so this Paris Climate Accord was an agreement that was made between leaders of all countries of the world. And they all agreed that they were going to do certain things to stop global warming. And so this is an, a, a global agreement, right? It's political globalization because it wasn't just one government that made this decision. It was a bunch of governments that made this decision together. And they had to interact with each other and collaborate and cooperate um, to do it. Next, we have NAFTA, right? So what is NAFTA? Well, if you take a look at this flag, you'll see we have the United States, we have Mexico, and we have Canada. They are all members of NAFTA because these three countries are the three countries that are in North America. NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, right? And so this free trade agreement allows people and businesses to trade freely between Canada, United States, and Mexico without having to pay extra taxes. We will talk a lot more about NAFTA um, later on in this course, but it's, an, it's a form of political globalization because the leaders of uh, Canada, the United States, and Mexico, they all came to an agreement together. They all decided together that they were going to allow for um, people to buy and sell things across the borders of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Okay, NAFTA is not called NAFTA anymore, actually. It's now called the USMCA, uh, which stands for the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Uh, but most people still call it NAFTA because it sounds better. All right, so what do, you, what do you have to do now that you've finished this lesson? Take a look in your partial notes. You will see this. Scroll down. Here we go. Number three, dimensions of globalization. So you need to fill out that box um, with one example of social 
globalization, economic and political globalization. So one example for each. And then for each one, you need to explain how this example impacts your identity. Uh, like usual, I did a little example for you to show you how it's done. Uh, this is made up. This is not actually based on, on me. I'm not really a big social media guy. But anyway, for social globalization, you could say something like this. I follow many Instagrammers and YouTubers from other countries. That's an example of social globalization. Now, how does it impact my identity? I've learned lots of new fashion and style from other cultures. I also use different slang words from other, cult from other countries now. Right? So this is an example of how uh, social globalization, or this one example of social globalization, has impacted, has changed um, my identity, my life, who I am as a person. I now speak differently because of this element of social globalization. I now dress differently. I now, um, yeah, those things. Anyway, all right. So I think you get the idea, I hope. Um, so do an example for social globalization, an example for political globalization, and an example for economic globalization. Explain how each one has impacted your identity. And when you do that, you will be finished. Lesson two, have a great day, everyone.